What's going on guys? We're back out here working on the stinking hard body. I know I mentioned about swapping projects and doing this and that, but I just want to focus on this truck, try and get it done. I'm tired of it being down. So if you remember in the last episode, we got the fuel cell in, got it all looking good. Everything's good to go there. Um, but I mentioned in the last episode that I wasn't happy with the computer in it. So the computer to the truck is actually over here in the Fiero. Um, that is my micro squirt right there. Here's the harness. I bought a new harness. So that's what's going to be controlling this, the Fiero. Over here, if you guys see this big old mess, that's the harness, that's the new harness for the truck. And over here, we have the computer. It's right here. So this is a FuelTech F450 or FT450. Um, it's a touchscreen, you can tune from here, you can do everything digital dash, but it's also your ECU. So that's super cool. Right here, this is the wideband for it. Uh, you can run any wideband with this, but if you run their wideband, which isn't exactly cheap, it doesn't take up one of your inputs. You can uh, run it through CAN, which is what this harness is right here. That's their CAN harness for the O2 sensor. So you can run that, and that will run the O2 sensor, run it through CAN, doesn't take up one of your inputs, and you can actually get like a CAN expander and you can run quite a few different sensors that they offer with that. But let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to show you guys what I did yesterday. So this is right here. This is the old switch panel for the truck. And this is the relay box, the fuses, and this is a fuse breakout. So we got to take all this wire everything up. There's a few wires here that go to the switch panel that got to go on there. All our sensors got to go on there. Everything that needs 12 volts has to get it from here. So our tail lights, our headlights, um, all that stuff. We're not running blinkers. The ECU, everything has to get power from here. So we have to figure all that out. I got it pretty much figured out in my head, I think. And what we're going to start off by doing is taking out Minecraft, which is kind of sad to lose Minecraft, but you got to do what you got to do. We're trying to make horsepower, not play video games. So I'm going to see what tools we need. I'll set the camera up and we'll go ahead and get the, uh, the gauge cluster, whatever you want to call it, ripped out of this thing. The, uh, the old ECU, the micro squirt, it claimed to have a bunch of stuff that I feel like it didn't, or at least shouldn't have claimed to be able to do. It said that it could do uh, flex fuel, but it didn't do flex fuel very good. Um, nobody around here really knows how to tune the micro squirt. At least that's what it seemed like. Uh, and it just it doesn't have great capabilities. It's not a really good ECU. It's cheap. And it will do the job. If you're looking to run your truck off of uh, just one fuel, like if you just want to run your truck off of uh, pump gas, I bet you the, the micro squirt would be great. But I really, really wanted flex fuel. It was such a big deal to me to be able to have flex fuel that I had to... I had to be able to get it. So not having that option just wasn't going to work for me. And that's why it's gone. So my buddy Derek had this fuel tech laying around. He bought a, a 1G Eclipse and was going to run it in there and ended up changing his mind. So it kind of worked out well for me. I didn't have to deal with him. Or uh, not with him, but with... Uh, with crap, there's that. I could just buy it from Derek. Everything was good at that point. No worries about nothing. 
and yeah, it seemed to work really well. So it does everything I want it to, plus some, which like I said, works for me. I'm happy with where we're at, what we're doing. And like I said, hopefully everything will be better. We'll actually have a good ECU in this thing, be able to make 500 horsepower like we want. Um, worst case scenario, we'll, we run out of injectors, which will kind of suck, but it is what it is, really. What are you going to do? You'd... I put those injectors in. So, it is what it is. But yeah, here we go. Dash is out. Or a cluster. There, let me do this steering wheel. Cluster's out. So now we can figure out what we're going to do to that over there, the, that thing right there, that. We're going to figure out what we're going to do to that to make it hold that fuel tech and go in here and look decent. So wish me luck because I have no clue what I'm going to do. There's a thing here. They make some really cool stuff they can like mount to here and hold the, the ECU up. But I don't want to do that. I want to mount it where it belongs. It'd be real nice if I could find a new gauge bezel and gauge cluster and restart. Because I kind of hacked that one up to make it work with the micro squirt. So, when doing wiring, there's two main things that you need. You need a good power source. You need a good ground source. So, let's get under here. I'll show you guys what's going on. Uh, I'm going to try to explain what all this is. If you can see this wire, it goes right here. This is directly from my battery. Um, kind of. It's actually from my starter. There's a wire over here. I don't know if you can see it in there. Yep. Right here. This wire. This goes back to the back of the truck to my battery. And then it goes forward to the starter, and then that wire comes from the starter to here. So this wire is hot. This is 12 volts all the time. So this entire bus right here is 12 volts. Um, it feeds all these relays. These relays then feed, one feeds this, and the others go to five wires over here, um, to these five wires right here. So one runs this, and then five go to here. This is for um, anything that the ECU wants that doesn't need constant power. So the fuel pump runs through there. The, uh, I don't know what else. All kinds of stuff runs through here. That's why it has a, a 30 volt right there. Um, the injectors get power from there. The coil packs get power from there. Everything gets power from there. Um, the relay or the fuel pump doesn't, I lied. It actually gets directly from the battery. It has its own breaker in the back. But that's the first thing you need, good power. The second thing you need is good ground. So this is my ground bus. That's where everything's going to ground. All the sensor grounds, all the grounds that the ECU needs, anything like that. My goodness, you guys just keep slipping and falling. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this wire. It's going to bolt on right here. And then it's going to run out of this hole over here. I don't know. Can you guys see that over there? There's a hole over here. It's going to run out this hole into the engine bay, and then we're going to find a good place to ground it. So if you remember, in the last episode, I showed you the ground on the back where my battery is. It goes directly to the frame. So as long as we ground this directly to the frame, we'll be good. And then here's another thing. Now, this is kind of a crappy part, but it's what I had. Um, let me see. This big red wire right here. This wire. Okay, that is my main ground. That goes to the block and it goes right here to the chassis. This big bolt. So we just need to ground somewhere right here. Honestly, we could probably go right here. This is grounded to the engine, to the right there, to the to the frame, which is grounded here, which is grounded back there, which is grounded there. So we could really ground it right there. I don't know if that's what I'm going to do or not. I'm just, I'm just not too sure. There's plenty of grounds on this truck. It says not to go to the cylinder head. 
it says go directly to the battery. But I don't, I don't feel like running more stuff to the rear of the truck, especially when my frame is hooked directly to my battery. So why can't I just hook it up to the frame? So I'm gonna look at this a little more, figure out where I'm gonna hook, hook up that wire. I'm gonna hook up that wire, then we'll get busy on these fuel injectors and coil packs and whatever else is on the list. There's plenty. All right, so I've done a lot since the last time I shooted, or <laughs> shooted since the last time I shot. Um, what we're doing now, I, I got my wires run. This is for coil packs. This is for injectors, uh, along with the crank position sensor and stuff. We got some grounds over here, got some other sensors that we're gonna be running. We're basically gonna be maxing out this ECU. We're gonna be using every input and every output that it has to offer. Um, which kind of sucks, but it has a CAN system, so we can get a CAN system and it'll add more inputs and outputs via that CAN system. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to need that. We have the boost control solenoid that we're running, our coil packs, our injectors. We got a temperature sensor, throttle position, intake air, flex fuel. We're going to be running fuel pressure and oil pressure. That one's fuel. This one's oil. Don't look at the way I'm doing things. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. And the really cool part about this ECU is if we lose too much fuel pressure, it'll kill the engine. If we lose too much oil pressure, it'll kill the engine. So first it'll flash the dash at you and say, hey, stuff's going bad. And then it'll put the truck in, truck in limp mode and it'll say, hey, it's really going bad. And then it'll say, hey, it's fucked and turn it off before you actually blow up your motor. So that's, that's a really cool feature and something that I really like about this ECU. I was talking to the guy that's going to tune it today. We went to Cars and Coffee, and he was telling me, yep, everything you want to do, it'll do. So I'm happy with that. But like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to start running these wires where they actually go, getting them in heat shrink, getting them wired up. I got my, my coil pack connectors. So we have to figure all that out, and that's where we're at. And what I did, and I kind of regret what I did already, I ran eight wires because we need eight grounds for these coil packs. And what I should have done is ran two and then tied them all together. That's what I should have done. All right, guys. So it's the next day, obviously. Uh, Carissa got busy yesterday messing with the kids, so she wasn't able to come record for me. I got the injectors all pretty much wired up and it looks okay. I had to wrap it with tape because I wasn't gonna be able to put heat shrink here. There's butt connectors all right here and stuff. And then we got the injectors all wired up. So on these coil packs, these are LS7 coil packs. They have two grounds, both these in two here. One, they want to go to your cylinder head. The other one, they want to go to your battery. I'm not really sure why that is, but that's how we're gonna wire it. So our first one goes to the battery, our second one goes to the cylinder head. So we got to do, because I didn't do a good job yesterday, is we got to take these and we got to hold this guy in here and bring this guy up here and figure out which one's which. So it's that one. Did this thing just turn off? Piece of shit. Uh, the battery probably died. Now we're going to have to get the fancy one out. So we went and got the fancy circuit tester, and we can just do this, hook that up, bloop. We'll go ahead and take this side. What the hell is that? Oh, it was touching both, dummy. Weird. So how's it picking up with both of them? Probably because it's grounded through the coil. I bet. Come out, you piece of junk. This is the worst part about these stupid coils in these brackets. Is the plugs go backwards. And it's almost impossible to freaking get them out. Okay, let's see what happens now. Yep, see, so since they were all plugged in, both were reading negative. 
So this is the one that's going to go to our cylinder head. This is the one that will go to our uh, battery. It's a freaking cylinder head still. So this is the one, right? Let me see. Yeah, this is our cylinder head one. So we'll leave it connected. We'll go ahead and get it butt spliced together and go from there. All right, sweetheart. So we're just hooking these up. I ran them like this because it was a little bit easier to run everything through the firewall and then connect it down in here. We're using my, uh, my wiper cowl as our tray for all our wires. I don't have wipers, so it's not doing anything else. Might as well, might as well use it for this. But uh, that tool that we were using, it's kind of like a power probe. It's a circuit tester. It's quite a bit cheaper than a power probe. And I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and drop the link to that down in the description. I really like it. I had to use it on my dad's truck the other day. And then obviously we just used it right now. So, so far, it's been a nice tool to have. So this is the power wire. Those were the two grounds. Everything's connected on the other side. So this should be injectors, or uh, injectors, coil packs, all finished. Let me grab the heat gun, Let's shrink these things down. My uh, heat gun's getting on its last leg. I don't know if you guys can hear it. <laughs> and that's that. Just like that, we got coil packs all finished. It's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this whole harness is turning out. It's all looking really good. I think it looks clean underneath the hood here. I just, I'm super happy with it. Really excited. So let's go ahead now. We're going to button up this coolant temp sensor. We get him finished. So I'm using these heat shrink bunk connectors. They're, they're super nice, but they're completely unnecessary because I'm trying to wrap everything in heat shrink anyways. So I bought this heat shrink that's got hot glue in it basically, and it seals up. You can see even just cutting it, the glue sticks together and you gotta bust it open. But we can take this, this is the fun part because this stuff just doesn't fit very well. We can go ahead, slip that on there. Now we'll hook these up. I don't know if it matters how these sensors go, uh, but this was ground already, so we're using that for ground again. And take this heat shrink, get it back up over these guys, all the way down there. Heat gun again. We're gonna kind of push it forward. We're gonna shrink this side first. And we'll focus here, and we'll be able to heat shrink the. Uh, butt connectors inside there along with our heat shrink on the outside. 
so we can get everything to shrink down just fine. Just like that, she's all finished. So now what we're gonna do, because I wasn't able to get these on all the way, nice and neat, we're just gonna take our tape, we're gonna run it around, wrap up these joints. I'm trying to make this harness look really clean. Not only the harness, but the way it comes into the engine bay. That's why we have a bunch of different entry points. We're just trying to keep really it looking good. This isn't a show truck but uh it'd be cool if it was so here we are basically almost halfway done like halfway to halfway like halfway to halfway to halfway um no <laughs> but for real coil packs are finished injectors are finished uh coolant temperature finished we got to run this which is our crank position sensor and cam position sensor it goes to our distributor, so we have to figure that mess out. Um, this will kind of be the last thing we do. A lot of this will get wired very temporary until we can uh, crank the truck and figure out what's going on. Because I don't know which one's cam signal and I don't know which one's crank signal. So we have to wire it up and just kind of twist these together with butt connector or uh, wire nuts. Check it. If it's wrong, swap them. Then it's right. Then we can finish wiring that. Uh, we have our throttle position sensor needs to be done, our intake air temperature sensor, our flex fuel sensor down there, oil pressure sensor, and fuel pressure sensor. We gotta run all those. So right now we already have an oil pressure, but we're using it for a gauge. So we need to put a T in there and a second pressure sensor. That way the computer can get a separate pressure reading from the gauge, just in case one fails, we still have a backup. That's my thought about it. I thought about just using the one, but I think using the two redundancy is better. Um, fuel pressure, we'll tie it in there. It'll come off this way, come out of this grommet. It'll be good. And then the last thing we got to do is our boost control solenoid. So we are super freaking close to having this all wired up. Once the engine's wired up, then we can worry about wiring up the fans, the headlights and tail lights again, the starter, um, and anything else that we can think of, but that's really about all I got. I can't think of anything else. So we'll get that done in the next video. We'll finish the wiring and then uh, we'll just be waiting on lifters. But if we come over here, we got this done. We'll have this done and then Maybe in the next video we'll be able to do all this too. I have to modify some stuff on the dash. But if we can get this, this, and this done, we're going to move on to the roll cage after that. Then it's lifters and tune. And we got to do these two. But those are easy peasy things. But really, we're kind of knocking this list out pretty fast. We're doing a good job. So I'm ordering the roll cage tomorrow. So hopefully that'll be here soon. We'll get that put in and then we'll get lifters then we'll get a tune hopefully we'll actually make some power with this truck this time so anyways until next time i'll see you guys later thanks for hanging out and hopefully this thing will be done soon